Good morning everyone. Uh, this week I thought I'd take a little step back and go back to basics a little bit. Um, I've had quite a few people contact me who've been really enjoying um, my tutorials but have never done free motion machine embroidery before and would love to have a go but don't actually know the proper way to set up their machines. So I thought this morning I would just run quickly through how to set up your machine so that uh, everybody who um, is inspired um, can, can actually have a go. First thing I'd like to say is you don't need a fancy machine to be able to do this. Um, you can do this with most standard machines um, with just a little bit of adjustment. So it's not a case of spending a lot of money. Most basic machines, even those without any fancy stitches at all, you don't need those. You can just um, do it with ordinary stitching. So first of all, I'm going to show you roughly what you need. Um, and as you can see, I've got my machine here and in front of me here, I've got just a few things that I'm going to need. And the most important thing that I'm going to need is this. This is a free motion foot, often called a darning foot. Um, and it is available from all good sewing shops and online, from online sewing shops, from Amazon, from eBay. It's important that you get one that is compatible with the make of your machine. And most um, manufacturers of sewing machines now make these. So it's just a case of looking up which one is right for you. You can get... Um, several different styles but they all look roughly like this um, I don't know if you can see here if I can bring it a bit closer this has got a little horseshoe shape on the bottom and is clear made of clear plastic um, you can also get it like this but it will be in metal um, or you can get a slightly different design where you have a complete circle here so you don't have that gap in the middle um, and that is called a closed toe. This one is called an open toe. So plastic or metal, closed toe or open toe. The big question I'm often asked is what is best? And I think it's very much a personal preference. For me, I prefer to use a plastic open toe, mainly because it gives me a lot more visibility. Um, which is very helpful when I'm doing small details. But um, if you want to have a go at home and you're looking in your little box of feet and you've got a closed toe, whether it be metal or plastic, it is still worth having a go. And, you know, lots of people prefer uh, closed toe or, or the metal ones. It, it really is a personal preference. So you've got to have one of those. And then what you need to do with that is actually pop that on your machine. So you need to take off the foot that you've already got on your machine. I'm just going to move this now and place this down so that you can see. So I've taken off here um, the foot that I did have on my machine. And if you can see here, just got a little divot there. And that just goes in behind that screw there. And then you just screw that up. And then tighten it up with your little screwdriver. There we are. So that's your foot on. Then what I also wanted to talk to you about is your bobbin. It's a really good idea to use something called bobbin fill in your bobbin. Um, I've got a, a huge reel of it here, but um, you can buy much smaller reels. Bobbin fill is um, normally polyester. It's a lot finer than ordinary cotton thread or, or sew all thread. Um, and it's a lot stronger. And the other thing is it's also an awful lot cheaper. Um, so lots of reasons why this is a good um, idea to use underneath. It's going to be a lot cheaper for you to use um, because you do do an awful lot of stitching when you're doing free motion so you would normally get through quite a lot of thread um, by using this you can actually wind more onto your bobbin because it is a finer thread which means you have to um, fill your bobbin less often 
and it is much stronger it's less prone to breaking i use white mainly very occasionally i use black um, when I'm doing much darker colours and I don't want any show through but I find for the majority of what I'm doing white is perfectly good and because it's finer as long as you get your tension right um, it doesn't tend to show through so you pop your bobbin in as normal like that and then use your thread to go down and up as you would normally just to bring your thread up so that you can put your little cap on and then I just tuck those under here. So the next thing to do is your feed dog, which is here. You need to be able to do one of two things, either to drop your feed dog teeth um, because you don't want the machine controlling your fabric movement. You want to be able to control that yourself. Um, so you can either drop the feed dog or for some machines, um, that aren't able to drop their feed dog you'll find in your little bag of goodies that comes with your machine a little plate and that little plate will just slot over the top of your feed dogs and just clip in here and that will actually then mean that the feed dogs are still whizzing round underneath but they can't actually move your fabric so for mine I can actually drop my feed dogs and behind here I've just got a little button that I push to one side and you can hear them go down um, some buttons are at the back some buttons are actually at the front when you take this tray off um, it very much depends on what sort of machine what make of machine you've got so you've dropped your feed dog and you've got your um, bobbin thread in place you then thread up as normal um, which is what I've already done here your thread that you're going to use for your top stitch next you need to come across and look at your stitch details on here this is the width of your stitch and this is the length of your stitch the width doesn't matter because you're only going to be doing straight stitch to start with what matters is the length of your stitch and you need to get the length of your stitch reduced down to zero or as close to zero as your machine will go some machines will only go down to around 0.2 which is absolutely fine so I just move my cursor across and then just bring that down until that's on zero and then basically you've got no stitches on here because zero is just my straight stitch the zigzag won't be affected and you've got zero length which is what you need the other thing that you need to look at is the tension for your top thread so basically um, it is a bit trial and error there is no set tension across all machines so it's worth trying it out a little bit first of all and um, on, on some scrap bits of fabric to make sure that you've got the tension right I usually have my tension on around three sometimes just over three but that's normally okay for me if you find when you're stitching that the top thread tension is too tight then you need to lower your tension dial down a bit so if you were running at three and that was still a bit tight then you would lower that down to sort of two and a half or two and eventually you will work out what works for your machine so for me it's about it's about three and then basically you are ready to sew so I've got a scrap piece of linen here and what you need to do before you sew pop your linen underneath hold your thread your top thread in your left hand put your foot down it won't unlike all the other feet when you drop your foot it will not go down completely it'll only do that when it's sewing but it does go down a little bit you then bring your needle down and up and then you pull I'm going to do this in the other hand so that you can see you pull so that you have got a loop I don't know if you can see that a loop there coming up and then you pull that loop through so effectively you're ending up with both threads on the top 
and then what I do because I've got an open toe foot is I just tuck those behind if you've got a closed toe foot you can just drape them over the top and that'll be fine and then pop your needles back down in again and then just give your thread a light little pull if you get resistance that is fine and that should be fine and ready to stitch if you find you can pull on through then something somewhere isn't quite right and it's probably a good idea to just take your thread out and re-thread it and you often find once you've done that that it'll be fine so that's all ready to stitch and then basically the principle of free motion is that you are controlling where the fabric is going um, and you are also with your foot pedal controlling the speed that you are stitching the general rule of thumb is fast on the foot slow on the hand so if you want to um, get a nice smooth line you need to really press on the foot pedal nicely down so that you're stitching fast and lots of stitches but don't feel the pressure to move your, fa your hand as fast as your foot is going down for the speed because you will never keep up um, basically what you want is lots of small stitches and you can do that by pushing down fast on the foot pedal and then just using the hand as you would normally to move the fabric around if you are tempted to go really slow on the foot pedal you will get very long stitches and a very um, jagged line it won't be very smooth so it's much better although it feels very unnatural to go really fast on the foot and then just slower on the hand so I'm just going to show you what I mean by that moving my hand that fast and don't forget any time you can just stop just bring your foot pedal off and just stop that's basically how you set your machine up um, for those of you who have been saying that you want to have a go hopefully you will find that useful please do let me know how you get on and if you have any problems or anything that you're not quite sure of then pre please drop me an email and I'll do my best to help you. Next week um, we are going to be back at looking at um, how I do actually some different bits and pieces and I think next week we're probably going to be looking at the different ways that we can represent cow parsley um, particular favorite of mine um, and that is actually obviously starting to appear in the hedgerows at the moment this time of the year so uh, it makes it quite seasonal so thank you for watching today and I hope you'll tune in next week thank you <laughs>